a little bit of fits and starts. Are we getting geared up to do something this year? Is this it, folks? Try to be crickets. Don't be crickets. Sitting watching it all happen to you. You, know, you can't make that. You can't make all that noise if you're out doing something. That's what it's going to take. That's not my rule. That's what we've been thrown into. We've been told we've been. Uh, we chose to be here. Well, <laughs> we chose to be here to do what? And that's what it seems to be the problem. We choose to do what is the question, and a lot of people don't understand. It's a not about how much you know. It's what you do with what you know, and then that that needs to be properly understood and done. It's not about finding all the excuses you can find not to do something. And I don't mean just frivolous things. You can do anything, but it, that, that's, that's not what we're talking about. It's what uh, one of my main criticisms. I look out and see things, and even the people that are admired and things that are people that are standing up, or the people think that they're standing up, they're not actually doing the right right things. They're not they're not seeing the right conditions. However, there are more people coming to the fore about seeing, even if they're seeing it now in the notice that they're being told this has happened, and so now they can put the pieces together. If they would have been listening behind the woodshed, I've been telling you how to put the pieces together to see this news we hear today, this notice, was the fact and eventuality. In other words, with this not forward thinking, uh, this not forward thinking, the, with the perception of what, what there was to come, you can position yourself a lot better again. Stand, get outside the road of the bus that's coming down to run you down. And some things have come up, and people are now making the comments that they are recognizing this, and they just confirm what I've been saying. So, and before I move on too far, this will be BTWRLM two four nine as the uh, numbering things that we do here now go. So you can find the content that I'll be speaking to, you can research even more, use it as a ste- stepping stone, a foundation to begin your studies and things that you find that you think are important, and you take that on by itself, take it on and, and start moving forward. Uh, um, I encourage a lot of people are doing more research, they're asking more questions, they're anticipating more things, uh, they're confused by what they find, and that's all cool because that means you're engaging some things, and it's just going to be a matter of not knowing, don't look, at, I'm just telling you right now, it's late in the game. Don't try to find be so comprehensive. Think that you're so you can get so comprehensively knowledgeable until you need to start doing something. Just find something you need to do. That you find a wrong that you need to be making right and go make it right. And I think we just do that, and that'll focus you on what you need to know. And eventually, you'll start picking up all the stuff that may be peripheral. But uh, this this knowledge is coming down. How I've been telling you, uh, it's been written for us to understand. However you want to uh, agree or disagree with what they call so-called law, statutes, code, whatever you want to call them. I mean, these are the things, the guideline, the guidances that people use uh, to to consi- to exist in 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 these societies uh, throughout the world. And uh, that's the those that run the power to harm you are the ones you have to watch, and you have to look at how they look at things, uh, because that's what's going to guide and that's what's going to protect them. Uh, and I've told you then, when you look at it that way, and we get over to the Libra Code, we're talking about you know you know them when you see them. You know an occupying force when you see it. You know a criminal when you see it. You know that you're being harmed when you finally see it. The problem is they keep you blind and dumb, and you keep the glasses on thinking you're cool. The dark glasses on, you think they're cool looking. No, that's blinding you. You put on any color, rainbow colored glass too. You can do all that. That, that's all for us to choose to do, Although, or you have to acknowledge it's, when there's a problem. You have to take be responsible to readily acknowledge it. Well, these things I've been suggesting are right there for us to see and have been. And it's really now everyone seems to be, anybody who comes onto this seems, oh, yeah, that's always been there. Well, it's a little different than, than what I'm saying. I've been saying this for quite a while. And as I said, the 249 uh, uh, episode here, I realize I think we're also, I've been broadcasting now for only, oh, it has only been, but it has been nine years now, I think, this uh, this week. So this is when I started uh, broadcasting, and then we went through a couple of networks, and now I'm here at reallibertymedia.com, and I've and, uh, been broadcasting on here, and I've made a specific decision to be here and not be on a bigger network, given things I was watching and seeing. And because I'm dedicated to what I do, and this broadcast is really limited to what I can do on Sundays. So in all things considered, 
I realized that I just needed a place that I didn't have to deal with a lot of uh, of the backbiting that goes on in a, in a major network, which I understood when I was at Oracle, and I didn't want to deal with any of that. I didn't want to have to get into that drama because it's tough enough to keep focused, and I just wanted a place that I could come every week and hope people would show up and people would listen, and then there was the archives, and that's uh, ever so important. And this is where I really just kind of add archive places, uh, different places, archivings, in order to get people to have access later on. Like, remember, uh, William Roberts, uh, he uh, he passed on, and um, a lot of people didn't have his information. And I, don't, I think a majority of people didn't have it, and there's no really not a repository that anybody can just do an on-demand click. So uh, that, become, that became a, a notice to me to be careful on becoming too confined uh, because these archives go away. Uh, in fact, I think a real liberty media. There's only so much space on the archive, so you may click into an old, an old uh, broadcast podcast, a blogcaster, and not find a file there. We just don't have the space, the time, and the, uh, the 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 space and the hardware and the and the ability to keep all this stuff going. So it's important. You know, eventually this this voice is going to stop, and then eventually the files are going to be lost. And uh, you had better been able to pick up what I've been saying and and pass it on to someone else. Otherwise, this future that I tell you is, is coming and now being acknowledged only took 10 years to finally catch up to it and what I've been saying all this time. And when I came in at nine, uh, at nine years ago, it was only because that's the where I could find a place in. I was trying to get in before but didn't understand the Internet so well. And I wasn't any part of any – There wasn't. it didn't seem to be very embracing uh, at the time to just let anybody come in. And I, and I can appreciate that as well. But notwithstanding all that, there's people now coming so many years later. Uh, to acknowledge the fact, and I want to start here because I, I think this is very important to understand we're in a war, a world of war. Uh, this is not a world of peace, and uh, being acknowledged, and if you didn't agree with me or couldn't see it or don't understand it or want to have an argument with me or even see it, let's now we can broaden the horizons. There's other people that have been in war that see exactly what I've been telling you, and I want to read a few of these things here to show you what I've been saying about the mirror, this carnival mirror that we see is the Middle East, reflects back on the United States. And the reason why it does that is because the United States government's military is the power in the world. Now, it's not the absolute power. Uh, it doesn't come away with, that, with no bloody nose if it goes in somewhere. And so you see this uh, tenuous uh, conditioning that goes on and why the government of the United States use the, the proxies, pro, tools called proxies in order to advance uh, their essentially um, their occupations throughout the world. And I, I don't, I've never had anybody talk to me about this in the government to say why we would do this as a people. But when you do this as a people, you, you can't accept anything but resistance on those that don't, don't agree with your oppression. And so go to those people that were in the, the tools, the fodder, the tools that, that made up that oppression. They start to see this connection between the, the, the Middle East and what the United States is doing there and what we do here. What I've been telling you is the carnival mirror of the, uh, reflection of what the if they'll do it over there in Syria, folks, they'll do it to you here. But the carnival mirror is that contorted mirror, so you don't quite see you for sure, but you see some kind of facsimile of you, and you can't quite tell. Maybe uh, you couldn't identify you by what you see in the mirror, not realizing that that's the only thing changing that view is your perspective. Uh, but that whoever will out go attack someone will attack anyone. Uh, attack no so, so for their reason will attack anyone for that reason or other reasons, and so this interesting report, this interesting acknowledgement comes up in a uh, report here. So this disturbing parallels between U.S. policing at home and military tactics abroad. Now, I, I thought this was very important uh, uh, to acknowledge. It confirms it's an independent confirmation of what I've been telling you is going on. And I think people need to under, understand this concept, even though I've repeated over and over, it doesn't seem to be settling in so well. There, there's there's a subtle this denial that we don't have anything to do against it. And if we go, just the Libra Code, again, the Protocols of the Elder Design, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, even Silent Wep Weapons for Quiet Wars, it's now becoming more pervasive. People are now acknowledging this document says something. And it explains what's going on. It explains all the uses of how they're controlling people in societies. It's uh, it's how they do it silently, right in your face, transparent to us. I keep I've been saying this for years and years, and it's finally coming up. People are starting to more people are now acknowledging all that. 
Let me uh, read this, a few more, a few passages of this. I'm going to read a little bit more than I usually do. I usually just stop at the headlines because it really says it all, at least to my mind. And I, I would hope, given I don't have that much time on the broadcast, to get through this pretty quickly, give you leads to follow if you're so interested. And so there we are. That's the beginning and the end of it for really where I do here because I don't have anything to really focus on for anyone. And if you're not interested in the one thing I focus on, you won't, won't be listening. So, and as I've been having quite a few people, actually, it happened again in the chat room, people have questions about the information I've been giving out and I'm trying to apply it, which is the biggest thrill to me. You're applying, you're trying to apply what I'm saying and you're seeing the application or you think you see the application. You see people using this stuff now and you try to figure out, make sense of it and you have trouble with it. Then we get into dialogue. In that specific dialogue, I, I can clarify quite a, few, quite a few things, usually. It's just a matter of organizing up the concept and get rid of the mis misunderstandings. And that just takes a bit of time, but you you have to be engaged. So I'm thrilled when I hear people, there's, like I said, there's been quite a few in the last couple of weeks, people just can't quite get what I'm saying, although they see it, is this what you're talking about? And then I explain how it's applied, and I lay out the foundation, and now it's, and it comes basically pretty clear. It doesn't answer the world, but at least gets that, that little bit uh, settled, right? It makes the foundation. You have a proper, more proper understanding of it, not not what you think it you thought it was, and not even your question on it. You get the proper understanding, because why? You can build it up for yourself. You have to decide these things on your own. So the news, the notice I tell you, is is just a guidance to say, are you interested in this? Are you seeing this? Is this going to help support what I'm saying to help you support yourself? Uh, is this a concept you need to hold? You don't need to lead with the fact that you're an occupied people. Just understand that's the environment. That's the battlefield. Better put that back. You don't want the occupier to know you. You know you know that. And so this is a, a little different dynamic I see in the world. And I can only affirm to you, the more I understand it this way and proceed this way, we become, and the people I work with uh, more closely, and anybody that gets involved that has a question and needs to have a better answer, and we work, and I give time to work with it. We come up with a much better answer, and we get much more successful. That's all I can advance to you. If you're not willing to do much of anything, then I'm I'm wasting everybody's time that won't want to listen or just wants to be entertained. Okay, fine. I guess you'd be entertained. I guess that's the limit of that. But I'm not here really here to do all that. I'm here to try and guide you in in things that are um, really honest. I mean, it's not even. I, I was thinking the other day, maybe I'm running out of out of my uh, my use because my utility, because it's it's in your face now. There's nothing you can't see now. And if you aren't moving on it now, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know what more to offer. And so I, the only thing I can be to hear, be here to do is I see more people coming, more people talking about it. They sound like me almost. It's kind of scary. They're coming today to sound like me, although the, the subtleness is I was telling you about this before, as you can find in the sources, I'm not a, re, I'm not a reader of reports and stories and articles and news. I'm pointing the news is telling you of a future and a, and a fulfillment. And you can choose to like that or you can choose not to like it. That's not really my choice. I can just tell you that it's there and what I see. And well, most of what I see, given the world is over, given over to an evil, if you don't want evil, you're going to have to resist it. It requires action. And you can't just do it by thinking you know. You got It's an evolutionary engagement. As I said, I can tell you folks over nine years, I was just thinking about it, I cannot even change a, a, a one part of what I've said, and I don't think it's been suggested that I change one part of what I produce and put out. I, I have a very few things I say, and I repeat them in maybe different ways, but there's really not a whole lot of other way to look at some of this. And until everyone gets that and then looks at the news and starts seeing, oh, yeah, that was foretold to us, and we should have been involved to interfere with that. And there was, and there was tools to do that, and bad on us for not. Then maybe we'll get a different appreciation of what we're really supposed to do, and not try to gain a bunch of knowledge that may or may not help us, but actually grab the knowledge that will help us and properly apply it. So getting to the story now, all that long-winded way to go, I'd like to read this report, the disturbing parallels between U.S. policing at home and military tactics abroad. I won't read the whole article. I'll let you do that. But I want to set this up a bit and then read up to the con uh, some of the conclusions he comes to. Uh, some of what they did and what he explains happened in Iraq, you, you really need to see so that because I'm I'm not a ho this will be hollowed out for you. Uh, there's a substance behind how he gets to these conclusions that you really need to see how, and then you need to start applying them through that carnival mirror uh, to the United States. And I said uh, what they'll do, what this government will do to the people in another country. 
Uh, they'll do to you. Uh, remember, uh, the the people are different from their government, and those in the government are different even from their government when they become the caucusocracy. So understand these all these distinctions. You know them when you see them, folks. That's all I can say. Your spirit, your intuition, your common whatever common sense we still have left will see these people. You have to look through that transparency and see them through what the the obstruction of transparency that they made. The writer goes on. His name's Daniel Stur- Sturson. Excuse me for pronouncing it wrong. S.J., however you pronounce that. Uh, I can remember both so well. 2006, my first raid in South Baghdad, 2014, watching on YouTube as New York police officer asphyxiated, murdered Eric Garner for alleging, allegedly selling loose cigarettes on Staten Island Street Corner not five miles from my old apartment. Both events shocked the conscience. Now, arrest on that. Both events shocked the conscience of someone who was in war, folks. You've got to understand how important it is to understand what's really going on in the United States. We have been desensitized to these really atrocious things we should have never been been accepting early, early on. The writer goes on to say, the author here, uh, it was 11 years ago next month, my first patrol of the war, and we were still learning the ropes from the army unit we were replacing. Unit swaps are tricky dangerous times for the most for most military officers it was similarly unthinkable that many embattled iraqis could see all american military personnel in a negative light but from that first raid on i knew one thing for sure we were going to have to adjust our perceptions and fast years passed i came home stayed in the army had a kid, divorced, moved on, moved a few more times, remarried, had more kids. My Giants even won two Super Bowls. Suddenly everyone had an iPhone, was on Facebook or tweeting or texting rather than calling. Someone in those blurred years, somehow in those blurred years, Iraqi-style police brutality and violence, especially against poor blacks, gradually became front-page news. One case, one shaky YouTube video followed another. Michael Brown, Eric Garner, Tamir Rice, Philando Castile, and Freddie Gray, just to start a long list. So many of the clips reminding me of enemy propaganda videos from Baghdad or helmet cam shots recorded by our troops in combat, except that they came from New York, Chicago, or San Francisco. As in Baghdad, so in Baltimore. It's connected, you see. Scholars, pundits, politicians, most of us, in fact, like our world, to remain discreetly and comfortably separated. That's why so few articles and reports or op-ed columns even think to link police violence at home to our imperial pursuits abroad or the militarization of the policing of urban America to our wars across the greater middle America and Africa. I mean, how many profiles of Black Lives Matter movement even mention America's 16-year war on terror against youth swaths of, the pl- swaths of the planet? Conversely, can you remember a foreign policy piece that cited Ferguson? I doubt it. Nonetheless, take a moment to consider the ways in which counterinsurgency abroad and urban policing at home might in their years have come to resemble each other and might actually be connected phenomenon. Have I said that, folks? I just interject. I just can't tell you. This is a an observation from someone that's been there. This is beyond me to now now con now conjecture if I had a thought and a doubt of what I was telling you before about the carnival mirror. Let's go on. The degradation involved so often is what he goes on in a section heading. The degradation involved. So often, both counterinsurgency and urban policing involve countless routine humiliations of mostly innocent populace. No matter how we're, we've cloaked the terms partnering, advising, assisting, and so on, the American military has acted like an occupier of Iraq and Afghanistan in these years. Those thousands of ubiquitous post-invasion army foot and vehicle patrols in both countries tended to highlight the lack of sovereignty of their peoples. Similarly, as long ago as 1966, another, an author, James Baldwin, recognized that New York City's ghettos resembled, in his phrase, occupied territory. In that regard, 
matters have only worsened since. As in my experience in Iraq, so here on the streets in so many urban neighborhoods of color, anyone guilty of innocent, mainly innocent, was the target of such operations, and the connections between war abroad and policing at home run even deeper. Consider that in Springfield, Massachusetts, police anti-gang units learned and applied literal military counterinsurgents doctrine on the city streets. Even America's stalwart Israeli allies, no stranger to domestic counterinsurgency, have gotten in on the game. That country's security forces have been training American cops despite their long record of documented human rights abuses. How's that for coalition warfare and bilateral cooperation? Here, at least, the connection is undeniable. The military has sold hundreds of millions of dollars in excess weapons and equipment, armored vehicles, rifles, camouflage uniforms, and even drones to local police departments, resulting in a revolving door of self-perpetuating urban militarism. Does Walla Walla, Washington, really need the very mine-resistant ambush protected, the MRAP trucks I drove around Kandahar, Afghanistan? And in case you were worried about the ability of Madison, Indiana, to fight off rocket, fight rocket-propelled grenades thanks to those spiffy new MRAPs, fear not. President Trump recently overturned Obama-era restrictions on advanced technology transfers to local police. I'm pausing there because you folks need to really pay attention to this continuum, this oppressive and occupying continuum. The author goes on, like so much uh, also in our contemporary politics, Americans divide, like clockwork, into opposing camps over police brutality, foreign wars, and Americans' original sin, racism. All too often in these debates, arguments aren't rational but emotional as people feel their way to intractable opinions. It's become a cultural matter, transcending traditional policy debates. So here's a final link between our endless war on terror and rising militarization on what is no longer called the home front. There's a striking overlap between those who instinctively give the increasingly militarized police of that homeland the benefit of the doubt and those who viscerally support our wars across the greater Middle East and Africa. I'm pausing here, folks. I just don't know what to tell you about this connection. I've reported on, I guess report, I've been giving you the notice that it's there. It's in the statutes. It's in the laws to watch how this is all worked out. It's in the omissions to tell you what's going on. It's your ignorance about that's going on. It's the, uh, oh, and I want to give credit again continually to uh, Cliff, uh, Clint Richardson's uh, Corporation Nation. There's others, the uh, Lethal Injection, all those documentaries that he pulls, pulls together. In particular, the uh, Corporation, uh, excuse me, Lethal Injection, which uh, he was then been able to sp- expose uh, Title 50. When you see, and this is how I started to find and read the read the the codes, the exceptions given to government, uh, people in government, to do the very crimes they claim that you would be doing, except for that license it gives to itself. Uh, I realize we are in an, uh, one is one discussion, an open air prison. I realize we are underneath the military occupation, and that could readily go back to Lincoln's time. You don't reconstruct. Southern states' governments, under a, a, a ostensibly under states you, of independent countries called states, uh, w- unless you are under an occupation, is the first clue. And so, th- there's lots of ways to get at this thing. You knows them when you sees them. Was it told me right out of the Libra Code? I didn't have to go far from Lincoln to have to tell me how I'm have to look at the world. International law tells me you're an occupied people. Uh, the militarization of the federal member. This is a district. It's it's force and effect. It's power given to the local police in acceptance. And this is how they do the so-called consent thing. They don't ask you. They ask the the people, the whole people. The whole people are not the people. The whole people are the legislators. When you start understanding what they're saying and what they're talking about, you start seeing why the exceptions exist to allow the government to oppress you. Why you see your civil rights at 42 U.S.C. 1982 is what it is. But you also see the limitations in there, and I've explained that. The status. And then I've come up with a whole different, I didn't come up with it, I just recognized it was sitting there, the saving clauses, where the limit of that oppressive power can be uh, stopped. 
by its its own power, by what it gives up when it does certain things. And this is where we get to the law of the land. And as we were talking in the chat room of the day, Frumpy was asking a question about the Bundys, and I might get to something there. That was a big deal today, but you see it's kind of quieted down once they were released. But anyway, I'll go stay focused on this. Uh, there, there's a certain understanding you have to have when you get that understanding of the hierarchy of power and authority in this country between Congress and the states and the properties, you start to find and see exactly where the limits of that power are. And but for the most heinous acts of these people in government, which ought to be made a record and found out pretty quickly, which we all can focus in and objectively understand is the case and then move with the mass of the people. And uh, until you have this foundational understanding, maybe you won't understand what I'm saying. You won't understand how I get at it, how to get at it yourself, how to approach it, even how to get the basics. Once you start to see it, it starts to make a whole lot better sense. And then you start, it starts to settle out. You start having less to handle. And when you approach this whole thing as this district over there in Washington is the occupying force that your local people accept, because this is all based on the consent of the acceptance, they're doing that for a reason, and they're doing that because it's offered, and there's no will to stop any of it, allows this thing to kind of metastasize in this country. And that's why you have to step up and, and, and stop it if you, if, you, if you intend to. Otherwise, I don't know what anybody's complaint. Like I've said, I'm really baffled. It's particular places like Real Liberty Media, uh, you know, where we come together in the chats and all, or UCY, to have any complaint, no action, but lots of complaints baffles me. Just baffles me to know it. Literally baffle. I have no judgment. I'm just sitting there, I'm sitting there shaking my head. What's the complaint? You have it to step up and stop. What's your complaint? Why are you just complaining? Who is that? What's that? What does that do? And I really, myself, I don't have much time for that part. And I stop again, I, as I say, I stopped making the excuses of not being able to, and I just found wherever I could work, I started to. And by happenstance, I happened to walk into a big deal, and it happened to be this law of the land. Not the one they tell you about that's in the Constitution. It's the one of your land. It's the one on the soil. And that, that will defeat, short of military force, which is why you see it out there, short of military force, it will, again, the force that comes to beat you down, the, which is obvious in a country that was supposed to not do that, that's where the, the only, that's where the, the power is, is to show that. Uh, the, the, short of that, the United States was not supposed to be suffering all of this. In other words, even with the law of the land, even with all this police power, it's not, it can't work if you know about your property rights. And if you're doing it correctly in advance, you're looking in anticipation you can make a record that shows them they better not. Now, again, you can't. You say better not. I say better not because you can't stop a criminal. There's just no way. I mean, this is what the problem is. We're just not nice to each other. We don't even recognize these laws. And when we think we got power because we got voted in by a bunch of people, and the people that vote you in are the ones that make the decisions on how they're going to save themselves to be able to beat you down because that's, the, oh, a police power, you've lost it. And nobody walks up and talks about it, and then uh, to well talks about it in the sense of exposing it, and then works together, stays divided as this uh, this lieutenant. I assume he stayed as a lieutenant when he got out. Uh, exposes to us complete confirmation of what I've been telling you is our problem is that we don't respond to that. Uh, this continuing condition. Uh, and mirror and the lies and the hypocrisy. What we see is a hypocrisy. It's a plan, folks. It's a, the, our problem is their plan. The United States again supports Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda in Syria. There's a story here. I just, again, I just read the, read the title. This is, you read the story and go on and on and on. It reads a lot. There's a lot of information in it. Too much for this broadcast to expose. You can read it on the broadcast or you can type it in and get it yourself on the internet. What I just said. Uh, and this exposes the United States is now, again, now openly, uh, supporting al, al Qaeda, No duh. Yeah? So, it's it's this is what the United States does, and the people, we the people of the United States, continue to allow it. Uh, shame on us. Embarrassment to us as well. And what don't you expect out of something like the Bundy trial, which isn't looking like it's going in the right direction, even though there's been this massive uh, slap down uh, uh, to the government, but it was really more of a mitigation of a real problem they had. I told you those, that system is, sits there for your entertainment uh, for to keep the pressure down, uh, to mitigate the pressure and not to be found out for what it really is. It's a false front system. 
it's a spaghetti western down there everywhere and you have to see that and you have to call it out nobody's calling it out in fact in fact there's lots of things that are not quite going in the right direction but again uh, support uh, where in, uh, where we were thinking oh the al qaeda was our enemy it, they're our proxy friend and they the government's willing to use a proxy friend to beat up people and i'm saying that they're doing that here with your local police force and the fed the feds are doing that with your local police force so it's a proxy to beat up on you and this uh, officer or this um, lieutenant uh, in the in Iraqi army sees a direct correlation if you didn't hear it behind the woodshed. Now, more things that we work on uh, that I've been telling you, uh, confirmation again, and I think I heard this, I think this is the one I heard at um, uh, Freaker's Ball, who uh, who then ex- produced their new sponsor from the Freaker's Ball Luminati group uh, sponsor, which I thought was funny uh, addition to uh, RLM. That I think for, uh, Grimner was saying, and he's uh, had an article a while back on. I think this is the one. Just wanted to point out certain things that he highlighted it on Freakers Ball. I want to just call it out here, as I told you before, and how we look through the transparency of authority. Uh, the Emperor wears no clothes syndrome. It was a, r- a report here done, I guess, back in November. Uh, scientific proof is a myth. And it, it goes through almost, ex- and this is what's interesting, not having known and read all, read all this, you've heard me say this stuff before, what I went through and, gone, went, uh, and had gone through is replicated here in all the reasons why our so-called science is just a big guess, and by golly, and uh, yeah, some of it works, but we don't know why, but we just accept that it works, because it seems to work. But to base, a, base controls and things on it may not be such a smart idea, and we need to we need to uh, be cognizant of this failure. This is not an authority. I'll read this. Try to re- I'll read this article a little bit here. Again, just some passages through it. Uh, I found uh, in, uh, all of it seems to be interesting in its own way. But for the broadcast here, I've got to watch the time. But uh, this uh, says scientific proof is a myth. I mean, it's just like what I was telling you. And this kind of po- points to climate change, and and it's not even a proof. See, remember. So, He's saying here scientific proof is a myth. Climate change is a statistical relation based on an unproven hypothesis. It doesn't even come to scientific proof. And things like that is what I'm, I'm pointing to when I want to bring up this confirmation. If you don't want to really believe it in me or you want to fight with me or you just want to accept it without knowing, here's a methodology to analyze. And it helps you analyze lots of things, how they go through this thing, and it's based on something we thought was solid, uh, foundational, which is called science. And they've taken these 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 uh, uh, these political agents, uh, change agents, have taken this so-called science myth, and they've turned it into an art form of def- defrauding us and and destroying us. But here it is. You can read it. And you accept it or not. I'm just uh, just here to report the report it and show you it's consistent with what I said. Whether you agree with me before or not, it doesn't matter. Here's a a statement from somebody who has the reasons why. If I have never put them together in one place. Uh, you've heard uh, of our greatest scientific theories, the theory of evolution, the Big Bang Theory, the theory of gravity. Heavy on the theory here, folks. This is the whole point. Uh, you've also heard the concept of a proof and the claims that certain pieces of evidence prove the validities of these theories. That's an oxymoron right there, isn't it? Folks, I'll, I'll keep reading here. Uh, fossils, genetic inheritance, and DNA prove the theory of evolution. The Hubble expansion of the universe and the evolution of the stars, the galaxy, and heavy metals, and the existence of cosmic microwave background prove uh, the Big Bang Theory. And falling objects, GPS clocks, planetary motion, and the deflection of starlight prove the theory of gravity. Except, that's a complete lie. While they provide very strong evidence of those theories, they aren't proof. In fact, when it comes to science, proving anything is an impossibility. Reality is a complicated place. I just have to interject, or just kind of harken back. If you've been listening to me any time, just, just consider whether you've not heard me say these things in the past. Again, it's confirmation. It's two people thinking similarly about a subject matter, and I use it in the context that this is the this is the the dust they throw in our face to justify the, th- the methods of the harms they apply to us. And we have to get a better understanding of that and get beyond an opinion, a fight, a division in, uh, with me, or even if you agree with me, get complacent because of, we ha- oh, we agree, so that makes it fine. 
No, these are the weapons. But I go on this article, or it continues, reality is a complicated place. All we have to guide us from an empirical point of view are the qualities we can measure and observe. Even at that, those quantities are only as good as the tools and equipment we use to make those observations and measurements. Distances and sizes are only as good as the measuring sticks you have access to. We also can't observe or measure everything. Even if the universe weren't subject to the fundamental quantum rules that govern it, along with all its inherent uncertainty, we wouldn't be be possible it wouldn't be possible to measure every state of every particle under every condition all the time at some point we have to extrapolate this is an incredibly powerful and incredibly useful but it's also incredibly limiting in science at its best the process is very similar but with a caveat you never know when your postulates, rules, or logical steps will suddenly cease to describe the universe. You never know when your assumptions will suddenly become invalid. And you never know whether the rules you successfully apply to, for situations A, B, and C will successfully apply to situation D. It's also a leap of faith to assume that it will, and while these are often good leaps of faith, you cannot prove that these leaps are always valid. If the laws of nature change over time, or behave you differently under condition, different conditions, or in a different direction, or locations, or aren't applicable to the system you're dealing with, your predictions will be wrong. And that's why everything we do in science, no matter how well it gets tested, is always preliminary. So don't try to prove things. Try to convince yourself and be your own harshest skeptic and your own greatest skeptic. Every scientific theory will someday fail, and when it does, that will herald a new era of scientific inquiry and discovery. And of all the scientific theories we've ever come up with, the best ones succeed for the longest amounts of time and over the greatest ranges possible. In some sense, it's better than a proof. It's the most correct description of the physical world humanity has ever imagined. So I think this is per very well consistent with what I've been explaining to you. You also hear the nature of, if you will, law and the evidence. The best evidence is for what you're specifically doing, but it may not apply in every case. And depending on the location, you hear me say that all the time with dealing with the law, uh, land manners. And so we, we hear the correlation of a consistency from one uh, subject matter area to the next. Uh, the proofs are only as good as the facts and the, and the uh, principles you apply in a particular context. Now, again, you don't dismiss that there's certain things that seem to work pretty good. And they seem to be working when you apply them that way. That's how we go. It doesn't mean that the underlying reasons why that is works. Uh, it is the fact. It's just the way we've accepted it. And it works, so we don't go too far. Uh, but as I've told you, we are our own best scientists if we want. We are give, The leash of that constraint has been thrown off. And we now can be the, who investigates the world to find the new, next, uh, best perception of reality, even if limited by our senses or, or whatever you consider those to be in the limits within the sensors. As I've explained and, and said all the time in you know summary ways, in denouncing these absolutes that certainly like climate change, they don't even they're not even embarrassed to say it's not even a, a proof. It's not include. It's not even close. And yet our lives are destroyed by these sci these people that put themselves out to be scientists, which are actually uh, behavioral control agents. To and they advance agendas. There are these so called scientists that say that they know something's happening are really adjective science scientists. They're, they're polit I've read the, the document that they, they, it shows by definition they're, they're political lobbyists. Okay, they're, they're nothing more than a political lobbyist. And let's go back to the origin of the United States. It was a political jurisdiction. Police is involved in political. Why do you expect it to be other than a continuing war? You look at the uh, the Constitution, it's a fulfillment of a peace treaty that happened prior. That was all in commerce. 
So that's why you can start focusing on certain things and you can draw the line, what I call that chasm. That cannot, that, that they really can't cross unless they're pirates trying to build, uh, build a gang, gangplank to your, to your ship. Uh, they're not, there's, these things are really absolute at the point of, of the principle and the law. And what you're watching is the, is the destruction of that in things that the people that are inside something called a government. So again, uh, if you start to organize this thing up in your mind, stop having to know so much and go so far, apply certain principles to certain things, it becomes clear, clearer quicker. And um, I can only say that my experience in that for with people in doing all this has been it has been accurate. So uh, again, it's in the, to me this is all a theory too. I said I've approached this by taking on this new of. Uh, taking on the belief of this reality I've seen, which puts us into a military context. I've been more successful with that than any other thing I've ever attempted to try. And then it's how do you prosecute your war? Not your war, or the war you find yourself in. And it is a prosecution. So we have these corollary words. When you go after a mining, uh, even a mining deposit, you... You are prospecting, and then you prosecute the claim. You you address the claim, and you extract from it uh, what what it has, to, what Mother Nature has to offer. And so these these terms are subject matter different, but they work the same in their in, speci- in specificity. Even though in each specificity there may be a whole different language set in order to address it. That is done in order to specialize so that the union industry. Uh, that they try to impose, that they do impose upon us and rules our lives has a, a way to run, a, it's their, it's their way to escape and make it, make it look like this entire thing is not knowable by most people. When in fact everything was supposed to be knowable, otherwise you don't have that Republican form representative government and that's the proof of the destruction and we get right down to Congress that was supposed to guarantee that, don't we? Now we get to the nubbins. Now we get to the hard part. Where does that get us? Where does that get enforced? And so, little different thought starts to go on, and it's not a not a willy nilly out there trying to figure out ways to disclaim uh, an existence of something. It's saying, no, we have a real a real problem in our face, and it hurts. It can hurt us bad, and we're going to have to figure out how to stop it. And we got to have more will, and no different than the will of the people like of, 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 of Afghanistan to resist all this, notwithstanding the poppy, uh, the opium um, business that the CIA has implemented that the United States military protects in Afghanistan. Those people have not been, are not destroyed. They will, they are still fighting. And we have to have at least that much will in the United States to stop the caucusocracy that's grown up around us. And the one that doesn't work, it's the administrative side on top of that. There's a couple of them going on. As I said, there's a couple of de- different occupations. It depends on what you focus on. A lot of people don't understand it all. A lot of people can't deal with it, and it's not judgment. It's just we aren't. I don't think we're we're built to to have to uh, deal with this many uh, affr- this many war fronts, and that's why I say it's really going to take more and more of us. I do a different thing that allows me to look at all those war fronts, but to actually be the one dealing with someone who's dealing with that is not my best place. And then the one that's dealing with the one that's dealing with, they're dealing with their thing. And so you start. I started to realize that there's, there really is this, this high, uh, hierarchy of skill and talent application. And it's not a hierarchy like vertical, if you will. It's the accomplish, if you will, the mission. And so you, only have, you have to have a mission. You're back to having to do something. You have to make that decision. And if you don't, uh, well, another confirmation comes out, and uh, I want to thank... I've been here 2017 on Minds.com for putting a comment in last week's uh, posting for the broadcast, which apparently was too bizarre for everybody. The Fractal of Destruction it wasn't a catchy title, uh, even, even though what I'm telling you is exactly what it, that is, what I was describ- describing to you all. But uh, he put in a, um, a link to a video, and I was really uh, surprised, happy and surprised uh, what, there was a 24-minute video. If you go to minds.com, find my uh, find my uh, account behind the woodshed, and then go to the comment of last week's production, you'll see the link over there uh, to a, a 24-minute video. And he was saying you, you need to see this because they're they're talking what you've been talking about. Sure enough, it was like a it was like a 24-minute roll-up of what I've told you over the years in short work. But 
it wasn't, as I've told you in, in an advanced view, a prospective view forward. It was from the news being fulfilled of what I told you. And so, and these people that are presenting are speaking in the similar language and the similar, we're very consistent in our pr- approach to how we see this thing lighting out in the subject matter areas I've been explaining. And I don't know how long they've been understanding this, but they are now pointing out in all this so news that I don't get to, that I can see it, that the fulfillment of what I've been telling you is there to do is being done now. We're really in the, if you call the end game of this, uh, of this fulfillment that's going on against us. And uh, one of the stories within their video was uh, a woman who has her own d- disclosure. And uh, remember, I was talking to you about the fires in uh, in uh, California, and these people, these two people, between the two of them, they hit er- almost every point. I mean, every point. I think one extra they found they had opened up with that I hadn't talked about. Uh, but it was the fact of the fires were going to cause people to not have their homes. They weren't set up. They weren't prepared. They didn't know how to get their insurance. That the new codes were going to come in to keep you from uh, being able to build, uh, to build, and the, and the insurance companies know all about this. So they're ahead of the game. All that was in there, folks, and this is exactly what the news is. It's coming down. They come in and they steal from you. They keep from you. They, they work on your ignorance. They work on your lack of preparation ahead of time. You know, even the legalisms you're involved in, and they take advantage. And uh, so, within one of the stories, I wanted to point out because this was in, now tied into the problem with your and they and she points it out, and I didn't get her name, the woman. You can get, get that at the link. Uh, she points out exactly what I told you about the cashless society and the fact of uh, the be ability to take from once you're locked into this blockchain or once you're locked into whatever the electronic uh, banking or so, and you have to have your accounts uh, with anyone that's accessible by the government or its offshoots uh, corporations, they will have a direct connection to turn you off, take your stuff. And you don't have a remedy against it, actually. Well, the evidence of this capacity, it did come out in this uh, fire uh, as this report and from a link I have uh, that AT&T, after the fire uh, the fire went through, uh, I think it was Sonora, uh, Sonoma. Well, it doesn't matter, uh, of where, wherever it was. Uh, the um, uh, Coffee Park uh, is where the fire went through. AT&T cable boxes were destroyed. AT&T claimed the boxes were $500 and it was it's reported that as families try a family tries to keep their spirits up and move on they're left to deal with a 472 charge to her account the the, the woman that reports on about this uh, and this was them billing out of your account putting a lien into your account your bank account to take out the money now it's admitted that that was never should uh, should they have ever deduct money from someone's bank account without knowledge was well, the official statement. But I want to point out in this in this disclosure that they already can do it, that if they can't do it yet and they shouldn't have done it, doesn't mean that they can't and they didn't. They did. And this is your cashless future is what I noticed here. Again, they're reporting on the things that have happened. I told you would happen. I'm reminding you it's to happen and we have still have decisions to make in order to stay away from the tech, what we can consolidate into the technocratic future. This digital prison that they put you in. They just come in and take your money. You know, if you look carefully and you look at this, you know, at some point, I guess you might be liable to it. I, I don't know. But to be able to just to come in and take your stuff, they're telling you they already have the capacity. That should really shock you. This is not a future thing. This isn't even me telling you they can do it anymore. They're doing it now. They've been doing it, actually. And so, another confirmation uh, from people who sounded would sound like me. If you listen to them, they sounded like me, except that they're pointing to the news after the fact. And I guess that was my subtle distinction about what I've been doing. For years, I've been saying this is coming along. They just now produce the evidence of it. I, again, I can't get to all the news. I read a lot of this, but to me, it's just a bunch of, okay, fine, it's there it is. There's the proof. I don't know what, I hear still crickets. That's my problem. I still hear the crickets. That's my problem. I don't care how much you know. What are you doing about all this? And if I'm hearing crickets, nothing is the answer. I don't even have to worry about it. It's pretty self-evident. So here's the fact, folks. Like, and in fact, another thing was disclosed. Uh, they're causing, uh, as I told you, they would cause code enforcement uh, rebuilding uh, requirements that would raise the cost 
of the building of the new building, and you're going to have to comply with new codes. I said, that's all the plan. That's the future. Well, what occurred to me after I read, I listened to that, it was later, what flashed in my mind at one point regarding that new code, new construction, was we've been shown that they're doing these uh, 3D printed built houses. And they look like uh, the, the, the plan form from above looks like two sixes inverted over the top, the round spots matching up, but the, the tails, the, the, the top parts facing opposite directions. Uh, and that's the entrance and the ex- exit of your circular uh, bubble. Uh, that they were building these new with these new construction methods, these round little circular homes that will be uh, what occurred to me will probably be the future. Uh, they will, and what I, occurred to me again was the material that they use in that is also going to be code required and probably, and this is conjecture, but the way they've done things in the past, the, uh, and you see this in, in different areas, they will allow certain types of materials into the building materials that they spray that make up the walls that will epigenetically change you. You'll be breathing it from the walls. It won't be said it's, they won't claim them to be harmful. It'll just, if you don't understand that that's what they're doing, it's just like everything else they do chemistry wise to us. Uh, they will probably put in these building materials things that they can find you in the new construction, expensive construction that they'll say is what you need. Only a few people can afford it. Only a few people have the insurance gear geared up to cover it and when you do live in those things they epigenetically change you by the off gassing of the materials they use is is another thought that occurred to me about how they continually herd us into places that's needed because we're not we don't think forward enough uh, to watch out about it and avoid it and so this is a they're also oh, what they did explain that i hadn't talked about was how dastardly uh, the uh, government is in mandating cleanups of your property because of the fire. And when you don't do it fast enough, remember, you're devastated as a family. You're devastated. You don't have a place to live. you got probably no money or very little, or now they're stealing it from your bank accounts. And then this, the government comes in and said, if you don't clean your lot within a certain amount of days, we're going to dock you dollars. And and then event, and it goes so fast that it takes away the value of your home. You can't build. That was a new. That was the new revelation of the city, the county itself does these impositions. If you do think you're dealing with a race of people that uh, have empathy with, with people that do that, you better rethink what's going on. And if you can cognize the fact that they do exist, those these creepy criminal type fail, lack of empathy people, these a, literal alien aliens, these alien species on our planet that will do that to other people, uh, then you need to be looking really close and you need to understand that's what you're vulnerable to and they're there to do it. And do you want to live in a world like that is already planned out for you. It's not even a question. Uh, so uh, though these people have your future planned because you didn't, and that's our problem, as I've been saying over and over more confirmation. Now, another thing that came up about confirmation uh, on what's going on, and these are serious things. Again, uh, what I'm doing today is acknowledging some confirmations to me that I've things I've found, but I want to project those into the future because they're not completely done yet. The, the people in, in uh, Northern California, you're seeing the example of what's going to be done to you in other places. And I'm sure Southern California's experiences now with their fires, the same thing. And it's not just fires. This happens to be one of the ways that they use natural consequences to, in, to, uh, um, uh, to just plunder, just take, just do a, a per, uh, be a parasite on your life and, and, and under color of authority, steal from you these things. This is a, the harder things to deal with in this case, uh, they were doing cleaning up the yard as a police power. Uh, they will deem it to be an, uh, an abatable problem, something that's of a, of a public danger. And that's how they start to do that, which is something you have to look at, uh, which is very difficult to, to do. But there's an, another thing going on, and in California as well. You just look like this is just the example state of the oppression, the dystopian future in, in action right now in parts to give you the uh, future view of what starts to happen in other places and will be happening in other places. Uh, and, and a public uh, public warning here for the flu season that we're into. We've been into it. And, you know, they push the vaccines. Well, the, the story coming out right now, and more confirmation, it seems to me, the severe flu brings medicine shortages back to ERs and a rising death toll in California. Now, why is that? They just imposed a vaccine, mandatory vaccines for all the school children. Why are they having this thing? 
But this is the reverse uh, psychology, and the counterintuitiveness of how all this works as well. Most people in California nationwide are catching a strain of influenza known as H3N2. That's the pig fl pig's fly flu, folks, that we talked about when I first started broadcasting over nine years ago. One of the very first things I hit was the novelness of the pig's fly flu. And in other words, it was the flu, the actual natural flu when pigs flew. This is, we moved on. It's now H9N7 or something like that. We found that out in Taiwan or Singapore, that, that scientist that got caught with the advanced form, the novel virus. It was man-made, novel, not natural, novel. I've been through all of this. But here's the report now, uh, and we found out later subsequently that these viruses, being that they're actually not telling you this, that they're not natural, they have no real resistance inside you, and they don't really work so well to for you to stop. They be, You become the vector. And remember quite a few stories that we reported here about that and warning to y'all. And I think the Disney case was the, the one that hits my mind quickly here, uh, that the people who got the flu shot were actually the vectors. Uh, most people in California and nationwide are catching the strain, uh, a strain of influenza known as H3N2, which the flu vaccine typically doesn't work as well against. We did read this report before. We've done it before, prior, way prior. Here's the admission again. Uh, and after I go to the, when I went to the title that there's a death toll, rising death toll, and they don't know why. You don't think they know why? This is self-evident. Walking, or we're just uh, the walking wounded here, and we continue to oh, scratch at ourselves and just keep the wound open. National health officials say the vaccine might only be about 32% effective this year, which could be contributing to the high number of people falling ill. Let's go to the look at that. Could be, yeah, that's right. There's no proof of that it is, but you know the likelihood. And I think if I was going to be looking to be suffering this thing. Uh, maybe I'd rather err on the side of caution and say, yeah, it's likely it is causing. And so they kind of hide between that, underneath that line, and we kind of know to look at that. But in fact, it, it's likely because we can't prove it. But what are you going to do? Are you going to believe it's likely or just assume it's not? And by 32%, it seems it's highly likely, uh, likely and, uh, and, and the vaccine doesn't work. So this is the interesting part about this report I got out of it. When you go read down through, they tell you all about, you know, how they tell you all about it. Uh, health officials say it's not too late to get the flu shot. Now, if it's causing, uh, likely causing it, why would you tell people to go get it unless that's our problem? You are the vector as the one who get, got the flu vaccine. It doesn't mean if you don't get it, you won't catch it because you will catch this thing. And it's, it's a deadly, a, a little more deadly strain. And apparently it's affecting, and I don't know if I got it up. It's affecting, um, in Santa Barbara, it killed seven elderly people out of eight who got the, got the vaccine. But the health officials say it's not too late to get that flu shot. Certainly not. It's not too late. Just get the flu shot. Just get here. We want to inject you with this killer. Dr. Greg Hendy, UCLA's chair of emergency medicine, said people usually develop flu symptoms uh, two or three days after they're exposed to the virus but are contagious the day before symptoms develop. Contagious the day before symptoms develop. And this is feed, it, 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 it again confirms what I've been telling you about how you can anticipate you're going to be getting the symptoms. And it's something I, I work with myself. So far, so good. It seems to work really well. And I'll, I'll finish this little report and get back to that. So before you even know you're sick, you're already spreading the virus. What a bioweapon, folks. Pretty cool. He recommended that people wash their hands and avoid uh, avoid close contact with anyone coughing or sneezing. You think, folks? Now, there is what I've told you before. That's how you stop and don't get. You stop it by don't get it. Don't put yourself in a place and don't have yourself unprotected against the obvious coughing and sneezing, but you realize you're contagious before the symptoms start. So this becomes responsibility on every one of us to be knowing of ourselves and whether or not we might be under an attack by this threat. And I've told you about how you do that, and I think it's it's been working for me for a long time uh, so far, that it, 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 given it goes in the mucous membrane of your nose, if you're paying attention, You'll feel it go in your nose. You'll feel it start to attach or try to do so. I don't know what it's doing. I just know it's there. 
And you've got to be aware of that, and you can't dismiss that. It doesn't matter. It's any So far, any one of these things that have goes into mucus, and you, it's even in your throat now that I think about it. I'm trying to think, how do you do this one in the throat? You will get a burning sensation. You will get a tickle. You will get some notice that there's something that's not supposed to be there. The body is already starting to, to, to fight it. That is your notice to go take your measures to stop it. And what I've told you works for me, may not work for you. Well, I'm always up. You take your vitamins, you do your vitamin D, you do your calcium, magnesium, and zinc. They all work together. You do your fish oil. They all work together. You do it routinely. Don't overdo it. Just do it as supplement. But when you feel that burning in your nose or that thing in your throat, just the first time you feel it, do not hesitate and do not wait. You go to your, your wherever you've got these uh, this bottle, a spray bottle, of hydrogen peroxide, and I just mix it. I just take the three percent. I've even mixed it down to half and half. So it's not. It's only half, uh, one and a half percent uh, uh, hydrogen peroxide. And I mist, put it in a misting bottle you find at a dollar store for a buck. And you spray that in your nose and inhale it in your nose and in your throat and inhale it there too. And you keep on that as long as you feel that thing in your throat or your nose. You, every 20 minutes, whatever it is, you make it routine. You don't make the excuse not to do it. And I, I believe that will get you, it's part of the hygiene part. You, 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 you keep yourself in a state and in a way that, you, that you, the, they cannot, these, uh, these viruses aren't in an environment to be able to do what they do. However they do it. I don't have to know much. I just know I've found something that seems to work for me. And when I get people to do it uh, for them, they either the symptoms are much less or they avoid the thing completely. And so I want to uh, just to just tell you again, because this is a serious thing. People are dying on this one. But it, it's simple as, uh, as hydrogen peroxide and water at this time. I've told you before, and I thought I had invented something after I was doing testing and I found it worked some even better, was to take some colloidal silver, and some uh, peroxide in dis- in distilled water, or just not clean. It has to be fresh water. Uh, be careful of that amoeba. You don't want to be just taking pond water here. But uh, peroxide in colloidal silver works even better, and uh, it's a percentage. It was actually someone who invented that. It's actually a patent I found when I thought I had found run onto something that was original. Again, nothing kind of like not, nothing new under the sun, but that works, and I think it works because. That's the where you start spraying, and I would do this anyway. When you go out, spray this before you go out. You create the environment that that inhibits the growth of these viruses before they can get started. They don't even open up. They don't even try to attach. And if you spray this colloidal silver and peroxide mix with water it, before you go out, and even carry the bottle with you and do it periodically, you pre- create an environment that if you do breathe something in, it's likely that it will flush out quicker and not allow itself. So long ta- uh, ta- talk. This is serious stuff. We don't need vaccines. The doctor tells us hygiene, folks. I've been telling you that. You just got to be pre- understanding this is no joke. No joke. I'm seeing here a uh, free and slave doesn't uh, apple cider vinegar, uh, lower pH. Yeah, okay. You can use, I, I, I haven't done it recently. I used to do it all the time. Apple cider vinegar does something else. And it, it can set up your body in a certain way. And uh, in, counterintuitively, I think the way it works in your body, it is an acid, but it, it's, it's, re, it's a reduction products become basic. Uh, and, but more importantly, the, the constituents that are starting to work, you think of them in a biological sense. They set an environment that's uh, c- counter to what would help the virus. You actually put a shield against it getting the signals to, to unload its package on you and then take you down. And so, again, just a theory. Uh, I, I use it. I'm still. You, I'm here, here again, here with the, all the flu going on. Uh, not. I don't want to, you know, condemn myself by saying so. Uh, I'm concerned that it, you know, it is serious going around, and people are getting taken down by these things. And I think there's more, more than one going around. But so far, so good. And I don't. Again, as soon as you feel the a tingling in your, uh, typically in your nose, and it happens in your throat too. You, you get on it. You don't, if you're asleep and you're woken up by one of the, by that, you get up and you deal with it. Don't let it get beyond the fact of it being able to engage itself in your body because it's faster replicating than your body is to respond to it. At any rate, you have your own, you may have all your own uh, remedies. I'm telling, I'm just offering what helps me to 
keep it away. I make a body that it cannot survive. I make an environment in your body that these things cannot survive. Do not want to, uh, do not get the signal to, to turn on. Do not uh, get the ability to, to do anything in your body. So hygiene is the, is the answer, it seems to me. And then we don't need all these other, other things. And what you do get is I find it, it diminishes uh, what you might get because this year I did get a little bit of a, a cold. It was like a cold. It didn't do hardly anything. I felt a little bit on me, but it didn't do come down. And when my body responded in that way, it built the antibodies against that. And so it acted as its own vaccine, essentially, keeping diminishing the capacity of it to do harm, allowed my body to sense it and deal with it naturally without getting completely taken taken down. And the answer, other answer is, uh, what do they do when you go to the hospital? There's nothing they can do. They give you antibiotics and, and saline solution. And the saline solution now is a threat. So what do you do? You keep your body hydrated. How about not get into that? How about get into some herbs that, and keep your body in a state of antibiotic? Not antibiotics. Keep your, your body in a state of this viral antibiotic by it's not having an environment that it can, uh, that these viruses or whatever, bacteria or anything can, that want to, uh, that, uh, that, that sense that they can take advantage. Stop the parasite before it stops. It's just like a theme behind the woodshed. Stop these parasites in the world before they can get a, a foothold. You just like the legal thing is to find the ways to become the, the antiseptic. Find the ways to be the peroxide spray. It's really not much different. Because why? We're, we're, we're in this, this world, that the, the illusion that we're living in this peace and tranquility and peace on earth and all this other nonsense, when in fact the reality is we're living in war. No matter where you go, whether it's in Iraq uh, or, or United States, it's, it's a war against you. And I told you, you know them when you see them. When the military, or the, what we call the police, uh, have special, um, they, they, they create special rights or special excuses you realize you know them when you see them. You're living in an occupied territory, and the uh, civilians don't have much of a chance, and every opportunity that is taken in order to advance the cause of the mission and deny the other. You, we find this little bit of story here, more confirmation of all this stuff. This week came right on through, uh, and, and you have to kind of consider how this is. But watch a cop abuses a power, smashes into elderly couple while speeding. Court blames the couple is the headline and uh, we can read through this a little bit the police officer who crashed his patrol officer in an elderly couple's truck is what it was not a car uh, while driving nearly 30 miles an hour over the speed limit will face no charges and will remain on the job despite a history of dangerous driving accidents even with the investigator claiming that quote if the officer had been driving the posted speed limit the collision would have been avoided the district attorney the bar-ass member, Bryant Dunaway, told WSMV News that he had no regrets about declining to charge the officer. Quote, both of them did things they shouldn't have done, and both of them violated the law, Dunaway said. They violated the rules of the road. They violated the, the rules of the road. Well, let's, let's move it down to what this is all about. Uh, rules of the road are based in the notice of the motor vehicle code applicable to a status. But more importantly, on the street, the rules of the road are reduced down to notice. The motor vehicle code is a notice and the postings are a notice. And so they've given license to the cops here to go and break the law. They didn't say there was a good reason for it. They just blame both parties. And because there was supposedly blame for both, the cop, the soldier, the military man, gets exonerated. By whom? The district attorney. Who is what? The bar member. Who runs your life? Right? They're the ones that do this decision. They're the bar. They're the court. They're the judge. They're the prosecutor. They're the persecutor. They're the ones that make these rules. They're the ones that make the law, so-called, the code. It's policy is the other problem. Remember, policy is police. You start out wrong. You don't start in law anyway. Go look very carefully at your statutes, your state statutes anymore. They're just policy. It's the policy of the legislature, not law. And they did that when they substituted your states right underneath everyone's nose. 
uh, for a corporate model business corporations act. The uh, bar did all this. And, and so you, you get out there, you got 30 miles an hour go, uh, over the speed limit car, uh, cop T bones you. Luckily they were in a big truck. The guy gets thrown on the street. They don't have to go through more of that. My observation though on this uh, part of the notice and him saying they both uh, uh, violated the rules of the road. Well, the rules of the road are based in notice. And, and the notice that you have as a someone operating in the street, so-called operating, so-called operating is doing the business of business. This is the driver. Using it in the capacity of a commerce entity, the notice on the street gives you your baseline liability as to what you're supposed to be uh, proceeding under. That when you look out and see a, a, a zone of notice of 30 or so miles an hour, you uh, a rule of the road for you on what you are going to be anticipating is based on that number, not what an attorney imposes. But this is what this attorney has done, and this protects the system. So my observation on all this, based on your ability, and you got to understand what is happening when you get out there and consider this whole thought. What if, well, so I'll say, here's my response, to, and it's on Twitter. You can see how I respond to some of this. I won't get an answer. It's just a, it's like a response in posterity. I think it's important to understand the standard so that we don't get lulled into believing these people are the uh, scientists or the political scientists in our lives that have any authority. It's all the best guess, and their guesses are actually opinions that aren't provable. And when we are pushed come to shove and accountability was to come to bear, if we would insist on it, th this, this wouldn't hold water. But my observation on all what this attorney said so, Mr. Bar-Ass Gatekeeper, given posted speed no longer matters as notice, what do you impose or opine is the upper limit speed for purposes of determining proper yield? 100 miles an hour? And is the city going to pay to straighten and clear all roads so your opinion can be properly applied? See, the rules of the road are based on what notices you have. And if you're told 30 miles an hour is what they're supposed to be traveling, you can accept, you're supposed to be able to accept that as what you are supposed to be looking out for. If this gentleman uh, called a borrowed attorney, a district attorney, is supposed to be elected into this, and you'd elect this guy, this oppressor into your life, now puts the opinion that the cop can make any speed. When are you, without a designation, and just on his opinion, when does your yield obligation as a, as a driver when does that end? What's the limit? How do you even know to enter into traffic if there's if you don't know the upper limit of of the speed that you're supposed to calculate your entry to the road from? Is why that that issue is no good, and why that bar key, bar uh, keeper, yeah, the not not bar man, uh, the gatekeeper of the bar association member opining that his imposition is better is explaining you live in an occupied territory. That wasn't law. That was an opinion based by one of the officers of the state, the policy officer of the state, the police officer in an executive function in the state. You know them when you see them, folks. This is not too hard for me. So what do you now use as a yield? And if you start seeing the, the government, the attorneys start doing this, you better be very concerned about what it's going to look like in the future, and that's going to be another indication we've kind of gone over the edge, really gone over the edge, and there's maybe no way to stop it unless you get a whole lot of pressure to start coming back and pressuring this guy to explain, okay, what were those old folks supposed to use as a standard for their obligation to yield? When is that? Are you, 60 miles an hour wasn't enough here. When did, how high does it go, Mr. Gatekeeper? Do I have to sit on the side of the road and calculate something down the road I can't see that might be coming at 250 miles an hour before I sneak out on that road? Because if it's a cop doing 150 miles an hour, I'm going to be blamed for it. Because I'm going to think I'm okay, and I come out there, and he's doing 150 miles an hour. Whoa, I didn't wait. I didn't wait for him to pass. Same thing with the 60 miles an hour. It doesn't matter. See, the notice was at 30. So I think point point made here. This is where you start to lose uh, the objective basis, and that's all these notices are. It's where the line of liability happens. That's all that's about. 
And what's that for? But basically for the insurance and then also the revenue enhancement. And what you did, you asked that, you applied that to yourself by your application. You've asked for this injustice. And so, so anybody involved with that in that area, I would have a great, a great a quite line of questioning to ask. And in, in some regard, I wonder if a collateral attack on this by injunction to say, no, you can't use that opinion that you get it in law by just that one question, whether or not he can change the posted speed limit and the liability a yield obligation. And if you can get that overturned, you show him to be no good, and now these people are going to be back. They get a grounds to protect because there was a wrong decision made by a, a, someone who took an oath to not do that. Anyway, there's the war we're up against. This bar member is one of the soldiers. He just un took out the foundation of objective basis, and he empowered the cops, the police, the state to do that harm again. And who pays for it? The one with the civil rights. Remember, 42 U.S.C. 18, uh, 1981. That's the exactions of any kind. Pains, punishment, penalties, fines, fees, all that. These people paid all of that. They paid the indignity of having a bar as keeper, a gatekeeper, military soldier, officer, make that decision against them. Because that officer doing that didn't rise to some shocking thing. That would expose them for being the occupiers. Well, now that you know how to do it, maybe it did, but uh, crickets on all that other stuff. Uh, now, on the other hand, we talked a little bit about this. Is New York, someone, something's going on in New York. They've got some people inside the government. And I don't know, I haven't looked close enough uh, to, to know why. They're starting to question uh, what's coming down, and I don't know for what purpose, but remember they were questioning. They wanted to know the AI. They wanted to know the under, underlying uh, code to see how, whether or not this AI is going to cause any problems, discriminate, uh, you know, at all in all these things. We reported on that. Well, here's another report. Another report. Uh, New York is now questioning certain things as well uh, regarding uh, they have a problem back there. And you heard the uh, Iraqi soldier uh, write, as I read, right from what he said, uh, this problem. Uh, and he sh focused on what he sees in the black community. I, I, I wanted to add, it's not just the black community, although that's probably the most obvious. Remember, I got into this because this uh, militarization, I was I'm one of the first victims I knew about its its imposition. But I survived my altercation, and a, and a gentleman named Lee Cole did not six months later. He's the one that was shot 23 times in the back through his pickup by the uh, state police when he went there for their help. That was really the writing on the wall for me uh, 30 something years ago. That's what got me started into looking at wait a minute, <laughs> where do I live? And so we have a real problem around the world, around this country. It's not just, it's more prevalently reported in black, in black people, but it started too. It was just as prevalent amongst anyone, see? And I want to get into color. We're all subject to this oppression. But here's New York City, of all, of all entities, a Right to Know Act requires cops to record people's explicit consent to warrantless stop and frisks. Now, I've, I've suggested to you before here that what you need to do, when you see these policies coming down from the military, the police, their policy is all important. It's, how, it's what guides their, see, that's the notice of their liability or culpability. And that they, as long as an employee follows that policy, unless there's no other constraint that the courts have said can be brought in extraneous to that, and they're only limited, but they can. But given that isn't that they follow that policy, they're protected. That you, I said, you needed to step up when you start finding this in your locale. Step up and advocate for the changing of laws or rules of their action, and incorporate in the policies the constraints upon this military. And you'll see that's a constitutional application, notwithstanding the military imposition, because there has to be the illusion that the civil authority controls the military. How this is coming out is very interesting to me, but it is. And it's evidence of what I've been telling you that you need, you can do, it can be done, and they're doing it here in New York City. They have a problem with this stop and frisk, and they're saying, you need to record people's explicit consent. Why? Because to do that enforces the Republican uh, um, uh, form of government, where the consent, the, the, the governed are by consent, if you haven't quite got that part. This fulfills that, actually. 
I'm not looking at how they're going to get around it here. What I'm saying is that a government stepped up and said, no, no, we want to hear the explicit consent of the stop and frisk because we don't agree with your ability to do that the way it's been going down. And I, I'm hesitating to read this. I would like to read a little bit more, but again, time uh, time willing, I guess. You can get it in the blogcaster. Uh, this is what I, I just wanted to point out. Uh, New York City is making a law that requires explicit consent. If you don't have these things now, the way this has turned since 9-11, uh, the, if you don't have all these things in the policy book now that are the enumeration of all the things you patriots think and all you constitutionalists and all you people that are anarchists that think there's something wrong, if you don't have your constraint, reasonable constraint placed into these policies, you can expect it to continue and get worse. That's well, all I've been saying is you get involved in the ways that you see. This one seemed pretty interesting because now you've got two things that this New York City has led with in order to try and contain a real problem affecting lots of people. So anybody who says that you're helpless or make the excuse, stop it. Here's the evidence that it's not, it's possible, if nothing else. And it's the thing the way you do it, I guess, is the other thing I'm saying. So you can end the nonsense by writing in a policy for it. And in fact, the way I look at things lately, I, uh, in these equity actions that uh, these equity remedies that I'm putting have been putting forward, I'm uh, realizing that the the part of the equity uh, remedy is to change those things that are incorrect and make them correct. And so there's another I'm finding another folded power into this this remedy to assert. Now you can go ahead of the time and get the policy changed, or as you come in as a challenge, you come in and when you find in, in the equity jurisdiction that you fulfill that jurisdiction and your cause and you find them without the right to do what they've done and you have the right to be protected in that, you can order, that court can order the change. In fact, there's a provision where the court can read this, the law you're looking at that's violating you and can write it so it is lawful. And I started finding out about this stuff and I'm like, it opened up a whole new chapter of what's, what's to be what can be done, and the tools there to do it. And the point I'm getting at there, notwithstanding anybody's disbelief or the, are you going to go to the system to get no, what I'm saying is that you start doing it right, and you start showing everybody it's there to do, and then you show those people in the cockistocracy won't do it. Now we start the proof, the beyond opinion, of the thing I've been saying we live under that's transparent. New York? City is doing a couple of things already I've read in, the, in, the, in some of these notices to us of what's going on. I'm telling you, as I've been saying, there's your evidence to stop your excuse. That's how you do this thing locally. You stop all this nonsense they keep throwing on us. You don't let, you go in and make a rule, you don't buy military equipment in the police department. You don't let them buy it. You outlaw their ability to do so. The, the federal government can offer it. You outlaw the acceptance. This is all pretty simple stuff in, in my mind. And I don't know why it's all that complicated. Now, again, it takes a little bit more to impl implement, but it's right there for us to know. So my hat's off. Without knowing the underlying problem of this, uh, my hat's off to New York City twice now, and starting to look around and say, wait a minute, this is now causing, this may actually, we have a duty here to protect people, to keep consistent with our, our establishment uh, and and the, one of the problems that we're now seeing is this thing, and we're going to end that problem by requiring explicit consent. I think that's that's exactly what I've been saying. Look around for all the failures that you find and require the government to impose the constraints that the Constitution provides. Is that is that so hard to understand what I just said? I don't I don't think so. It's a matter of whether you're going to engage is really all the question and are you answering that question before in prejudicing the, the need to answer that are you saying well I'm not going to get involved anyway so I'm not going to answer that uh, I'm saying you may not want to be interested in that doing that but that answer looking at it that way may give you the response you need in the thing you find needs to be done that's not that to me this is just an exercise an exercise in order to get our muscles back together of being the people the educated masses that actually uh, are vigilant to maintain what was provided for us to have, the republic, if we could keep it. 
Right. It's. I mean, this is to me. I just said that it's like I'm just coming back in a dead, uh, broken record to me. But no one does it. No, everyone talks about it, excuses or fights me or whatever. But no one does anything to fix what I just said. Make that up right. What what I just said is there for us to do. Fascinating. I just think about it. It's going to get lost in my, in in the den- in the denial. I, I I don't know. Any rate. So, uh, and to show you uh, another thing, be careful about the. The jury being too ignorant to know better, and what it what it gives in, from propaganda and this uh, de- desensitization. Uh, be careful that a jury isn't. Everyone wants to say the jury can nullify. Well, the jury can uh, can also help if they're if they're not ignorant, or they're not uh, persuaded uh, to be uh, a terrorist sympathizers, government caucusocracy supporters. Uh, as a warning here, jury awards couple no damages. Uh, for bungled marijuana raid predicated on wet tea leaves. A little story we reported a long time back. It finally made the news about the outcome. Uh, A jury has shrugged its shoulders in response to a farcical effort by local publicity hounds, drug warriors, to score a 420 marijuana bust, only to end up with a handful of garden supplies and violated rights. The lead-up to the bungled raid of Robert and Addy Hart's house included a law enforcement agency hoping to bury the previous year's 420 raid failure in which tomatoes were seized, a state trooper compiling a freelance database of garden store visitors, two field drug tests that identified tea leaves as marijuana, and a whole lot of might, uh, might makes right drug warring. And here we are, back to the, uh, the Iraqi soldiers' discussion. The war on drugs is here, and they, don't, they use every opportunity to, inve- to uh, uh, attack even the innocent for whatever excuse. Well, anyway, so the jury uh, goes to court, and the jury won't give them any remuneration for the harm. Not even the the replacement of certain things. Nothing. And so I wanted to point out a caution about dealing in the uh, law side of this and juries. We are a society that may not be so, so art intelligent anymore about how to really parse through what this is, com- combined with the uh, bar-ass gatekeepers who will constrain a discussion so that it's harder to find what you need to do as a jury uh, within the context of, of this case. Now, so I won't read more of that. Just understand that those people who got their house raided for no good reason uh, on, to- on literally tomatoes and, a, and a, the false test again comes up relevant here. Their their courts, their appeal courts, actually said those false those uh those uh chemical tests are not good. They're still going to be used, so that's a problem. You need to go in there and say that those tests you got to get it outlawed. Those tests are are outlawed. They use them for the to gain the reasonable belief uh, that there could be something there, but they were based on a false return, a false positive, which gave the probable cause. Well, to me, that's still a trespass. I don't care how that all works down. I don't care. We want to put fault. Uh, you find, try not to find fault. It doesn't matter that the jury, a jury would not find fault. A trespass requires no fault to be found. And so my thought turned to here as an addition to the report here that a jury may not help you is there's these other remedy. you got the law side and you have the equity side, what I've been telling you to start looking at as well for remedies and lots of things. My thought is the trespass, now they have the proof that they can't get a remedy for the harm the injury that was caused, the irreparable harm that was caused, and that's the a jurisdiction of equity to resolve. That trespass doesn't require a harm, and it doesn't need an equity doesn't provide for juries. That when they got this, they prove they have no adequate remedy at law. The jury, the case, the jury, the trial, however it went. And they should now file, or I would consider, I haven't looked at all this, so take this with a grain of salt as far as the application, but to consider uh, filing an equity action for the tr- the bare trespass. The irreparable harm caused thereby, the lack of remedy at law, with the requirements, that the whole of society would be benefited from not having the cops stepping in and breaking your stuff up and then leaving the homeowner or whomever, whoever it is, the property owner, to deal with a trespass that, that is on it, that by definition is against the law. You can't even defend against that. You cite it, you, you petition for a remedy in equity, not in equity, but in equity. And inside the equity remedies, you can get 
given, again, the, the, the judge is there to do so. You come from the power of the rights of the land that you have to not be trespassed by anyone, again, exclusive against the whole world, as this is supposed to work out, if you prove it in your case, which should be right up front of your petition, that this is the property you hold to this level of protection, and the state court's obligated to do that for a couple of reasons, and you lay those out as well, that that in a, an equity a case, action, I guess they call it now, you can get the judge to decide for the remedy that you now prove has no remedy at law. This this case right here seemed to be right on top to do that. So just if you read the story, yeah, it's, it sounds like a big nasty thing, and yeah, they have to go through another another option if you think that what I said is an option, and I think it is, uh, made con- constructed correctly. Uh, they have another uh, another attempt by way of the equity side of the court, and and this is where the law provided no uh, no answer. There was no law that gave them protection. Notwithstanding, they were never supposed to suffer the trespass. Again, the point being, trespass doesn't require culpability. It just requires the occurrence of the trespass. And then, and then your right to uh, to not have it happen. I guess that's part of that as well. It, it sounds like it's included, but it, you have to develop that you had the right to be, um, that it, what they did was the trespass. And so just lay that out. I didn't like hearing about it all. They just pointed out the fr- the fr- foilty, the, the, the Frivolity at some level of these juries, and be careful of not not thinking and thinking you have a a, case, a slam dunk case, even with all the evidence that should have said that this shouldn't have been a zero return, that equity should step in right here, and I think they have another attempt uh, if they were to choose it, and if they're uh, as I would conceive this as well as I think about it, just to add more on the record here for you all to hear, and I'm really hoping some of you know about this. You can go back and talk to them. Uh, at some point, somebody knows these people to go uh, offer. This is a suggestion. Uh, consider the underlying power of the land to the conveyance from Congress cannot be overridden by by a state. And then this actually came in the in the RLM chat uh, with a discussion on court case. Uh, the, the power of Congress to dispose these lands by their conveyances is absolute, and the state can't create any any inf- in, uh, involvement either. But the equity w- should step in on a, the bare naked trespass. There's no culpability required to be shown. It's just you show, it's kind of what the government does to you. Did you do or did you not do this in the tax law? That's what you do in equity. It's an equity action, what that is. And you just have the right to answer to it. That's it. And if you constrain your constrain your petition to that, there's nothing they, they can else do wise, else wise to do. And you've pretty well got them in, in, in the point. Now, the equity remedies are quite extensive anymore. In fact, I'm beginning to find a problem with uh, confining uh, it looks like the, the law remedies are bleeding over, even though you have to speak to them a slightly different way. The What's available in a law uh, is available in equity, but for a different reason. And you have to know what those reasons are and preface the, the demand of those uh, for in that way. So pretty fascinating as I get deeper into these equity um, uh, actions, remedies, uh, in particular the, the injunction. Well, you have the writs of mandate. You have all kinds of stuff that come to bear uh, in a court. And uh, it doesn't require the jury. And it, and then the judge is now locked into the law. And as I like to do it from the congressional disposal, they're locked into the obligation as a trustee uh, to uphold the protection of the state. And that can be put on them as well. So there's a whole lot I just told you. It's I'm, I'm dealing with doing all that I've been dealing with for quite a long time. It's coming a lot clearer as I deal with it more. As I told you, the more you work with something, the more proficient you get, the more comprehensive your understanding um, on it, and it and it becomes less certainly less foreign uh, to any of us that that do any of this in protection of being that vigilant people that we're protecting or attempting to protect ourselves against the piracy that's come on us, come, come on us, or the militarization that's come on us. Uh, it's another way to get around. Uh, there's another again. This is a remedy around the law, around the ignorance of the people, as I see it. Which is pervasive and no judgment, just the way we are at this point. Um, another caution, again, I told you be careful. Again, this seemed to be the week of confirmation. Uh, more reports of things that I've told you. This is just look out, be careful, anticipate the future, folks. Don't step into these. Don't don't willingly or, or absently or through excuse step into these traps. Community horrified as cops kill upstanding unarmed citizen traveling 
to a spiritual retreat. A, a, a lot of loaded words in, in there. Uh, and I find this happening with the Free Thought Project. And I hope you read through that. But let's get to the point of it. Uh, let me read a little bit here. Community members are horrified at searching for answers after beloved citizen Hutchinson, Kansas. So, Grammy Mary, it's in your neck of the woods. Watch out. Uh, this is not Kansas Toto, not this one. Uh, this can happen to you anywhere. Uh, in this case, it happens uh, uh, in, a, in, in an interesting way through some other problem that develops right here where he was shot and killed by a federal officer while traveling to a spiritual retreat. Tyler Miller, 51, was driving on a curvy mountain road in a Coconino National Forest in Arizona when he lost control of his pickup truck and hit a large rock, according to the report of KWCH News. However, the details regarding what happened between the time Miller crashed and the time a federal officer opened fire on him are still largely unknown. A statement from the FBI's Phoenix office claimed that a U.S. Forest Service officer, quote, stopped to help Miller after he was uh, involved in a wreck. However, the agency did not include details about what occurred when the officer approached Miller, how long the encounter lasted, or why it turned deadly. I want you to involve yourself with the thought about who is being involved, the FBI being involved at all. A mountain road is a conveyed highway to the state authority. They have, at minimum, concurrent jurisdiction. The FBI has no exclusive jurisdiction unless your local law officer handed it to him, and he shouldn't have done it. And this, okay, let's go on. The, the report here goes on. The FBI has not said if the officer who shot Miller was wearing a body cam and it is not indicated whether the dash cam footage from the incident will be released. The agency has uh, confirmed uh, that it will turn the case over to the United States Attorney's Office to determine if the officer will face charges. And so you have a foreigner underneath a foreign law doing killing people in your uh, neck of the woods and going to be dealt with by uh, their own courts in the back and back in east and the FBI is ahead of this not telling anybody anything and your local sheriff is not involved to get all that information themselves as well and there's no report about that but you are innocent going down the highway a mountain road to get to a retreat uh, you stop you run into a problem uh, you step out and for some reason and there, you read the story there's just this guy just wasn't the type of guy to be uh any kind of uh, violent, we don't know though. But but here here he is ends up dead. And for all intents and purposes, let's look at the condition. He has an accident. He's not doing any crime. At least we're not told by the FBI that he was intoxicated. If that wasn't could be a problem, a license to kill. And yet this thing seems to be hushed up pretty good on what I see to be a concurrent jurisdiction in the state. So we don't have to rely one-sided on an agency, of, an FBI agency who is now known to be a criminal, who, who is known to aid and bet terrorism, the FBI, who I know absolutely attacked, uh, who attacked our chairman and us when we attempted to uh, expose the uh, corruption in the federal government agencies that employ these Forest Service officers and the BLM, so-called LEOs, which I tell, I tell you, 43 U.S.C. 1733 shows there is no direct law enforcement authority in those organizations. They have to contract with the sheriff. Why? Because there's concurrent jurisdiction and the authority for law enforcement is in the state county, in the county of that state. They can be witnesses, but they can't actually be law officers. What they do is they get contracts and then they go to get the state and they get certified as a cop. Well, if they're state certified as a cop, why is that issue going to Washington? That's a state issue, isn't it? And here we start to hear the, the stupidity that happens around the convolution and confusion about what's happening, which ends up being what you see in the Bundy, Bundy uh, case. And the, all of them, all those cases. The seven minors I keep uh, I'm telling you about. All those all the producers get attacked. And it's all done incorrectly. And it puts reliance on a lot of things that really are incorrect. Incorrect uh, setups and foundations. So, apparently innocent man gets killed 
uh, family, a uh, big family, a uh, uh, nice guy. In fact, I would think it was reported uh, like a week before that he's standing in line at a fast food joint. Don't know why he's there, but anyway, he's fa- and he says behind him, he says, I'll buy lunch for everybody behind him. What kind of a guy would go out in a forest and, and attack a, 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 a forest service uh, employee? It happened to be that a couple of the guy, people in the in the line happened to be cops he bought the lunch for. I mean, when do we stop this nonsense here? But but to have this thing picked up by the feds and moved over to walk to go to Washington is completely out of line for me. It's uh, it, it's exactly what the problem is here, and I hear no massive uh, massive educated people holding that holding against it. See, this is not the intercession. This is the in, this is the obligation of the of enforcing the law, and this is the distinction I have in the, in the problem with the Bundy issue. When he took came out of the after he was released, Cliven was released, and he says, "I'm not mad at the federal government. I'm I'm kind of angry with my local government. They were supposed to step in. No, that's an intercession. You don't want to do that. Your property rights, the law supports that in the beginning. You don't have to worry about something else. They have a different duty. And when you give over that, you don't have uh, the uh, a problem with the trespasser himself. You've given license to it. You've you've given up your whole position, as far as I can tell. And this is what we tend to do." We've forgotten to look at the jurisdictions uh, accurately. And I've told you, where do you find that? Just, the Eisenhower book of 1956, a two-volume book. It talks all about, the, the, President Eisenhower wanted to know, what is my jurisdiction here? What can I affect and how? And there's four jurisdictions on this land. And you have to know what those are and be able to work that out. So, not the same type of death that can happen by government, but by the policies and, and, and engagement of government and its officials, and the stealing away of a remedy or so, or the convolution of a thing, but that the government is all-powerful wherever it goes, it seems. And I've been telling you, this was coming to the confirmation here, was watching out about these uh, cryptocurrencies, that the governments are working kind of two ends. I hope you've been picking this up. One is they let it but then they make you liable in different ways to keep up uh, or they outright uh, ban it. And you can do it if you want to, if you just want to be on the wrong end of that, that stick and you gamble whether or not you're going to keep uh, yourself anonymous to its inquiry, which we find is almost an impossible. Uh, there's no shield against this with all the problems with the uh, digital uh, backdoors and mis misarchitecture that I talked about last week, uh, South Korea preparing to ban all cryptocurrency trading in the country. So up front, that's not so bad if, if if you know not to do that. But see, this is the thing that I'm telling you. The governments have the power to constrain or control or limit or regulate this thing that was not even invented by it. And part of this connection was done up in the beginning. I saw the problem was what, it, when it was created, it was connected to something that it should have never been connected to that that I believe was connected for the purpose of what they're doing with it now. So in South Korea, they're preparing, and this has been saying for a few days now, preparing, it may have already happened, to ban cryptocurrency trading in the country. South Korea's justice minister said on Thursday that a bill is being prepared to ban all cryptocurrency trading in the country. The news is a major development for cryptocurrency space, and the South Korea is one of the biggest markets for major coins like Bitcoin and Ethereum. According to the industry website CryptoCompare, more than 10% of the Ethereum is trading against South Korean won, and the second largest concentration in terms of fiat currency behind the dollar. Meanwhile, 5% of all Bitcoin are traded against the won. I, I won't read no more. Just understand that South Korea is saying this is too much the way it's working. We don't feel we want to enter into this. We're going to ban it. And then what they do is they ban you as a company or as a, a, a one that holds themselves out or the ones they can find. And so, word of caution uh, to all y'all. I told you this world's going to be divided between those that ban and those that allow. The ones that ban, you'll be liable just to, from trying to deal with it if you're in those jurisdictions. And the other ones will allow it, but they'll be getting you for other reasons, like you find in the United States for IRS liability. Now, how they connected that li- IRS liability through the tax code is a is a wonder to me at one level, but you'll I know why, and it's why it was created in the beginning, and it's really how they're doing it. And no one noticed that. 
And it's something else that, uh, that the IRS did about what they call value and how they find it, how they determine it. That hasn't been challenged either. And it's not going to be done for me by me behind the woodshed to do that. Uh, but there's a different analysis that has to be done and that has not been done. And so they, they win the day because they're the presumed authority. When you live in a country like that, you have to understand you're living underneath military force. And you know that's the truth. I don't have to go on, on about that. Now, what about that military force? What about utilizing all this, uh, this invented commerce transactions, not with, not in disregard of its actual original sourcing, at least on some of what I see? Not, again, you have to understand the lineage to the electricity as well before we get to the cryptocurrency as a thing. But notwithstanding all that, uh, the way that the, the governments traffic is an interesting concepting that came up this week uh, that I think kind of maybe slipped under the wire a little bit. At least maybe not, not for me, it didn't seem, and maybe it wasn't such a big deal for people, but I wanted to make a, a little bit of a, 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 some hay over it. I posted like three, three uh, uh, Twitters about, uh, tweets about this, uh, and it was uh, called Human Trafficking Awareness Day. Now, going back to the cryptocurrency, and and then for IRS, and then for the United States, the IRS, when they can tax your your so-called labor, and they can deem it a gain, you're not paying you're not paying much of attention. Uh, but that's what they do, and they commerceify everything in order to bring it into this condition. Number one, number two is they relate it to the the FRN. The FRN on it, the last letter N means note. And there's nothing new I've always explained. The word note is evidence of debt. Now on its face, without any more imposition, and I don't need to hear all the opinions about this. You don't have, I don't, I've heard lots and lots and lots. I don't know if I've heard it all, but I've heard tons. Uh, the note is an evidence of debt. And my question off uh, right up front, which is rhetorical, and note doesn't need an answer. Well, if you deal in an evidence of debt and you're not dealing in specie, in substance, how are you not a debtor? And I've already said, I invented long ago the term, uh, whether or not I, I put it as my, my invention, whether you can agree or find a source from uh, elsewise, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, debtor, not a master B. So if you're dealing in the FRN, you're already in, in a servitude. Now, Human Trafficking Awareness Day became this big old deal about the United States government and everything that's going on and the international recognition uh, that uh, we should be aware of trafficking, human trafficking. And my response on a Twitter was, government is the biggest human trafficker for the United States to start here. And I put the link to Title 42, Section 1981. The rights of the as, uh, of the citizen of the United States as the white citizen to suffer pains, punishments, penalties, fees, fines, taxes, and exactions of every kind. Then I asked the question on this tweet: uh, Think uh, courts are for justice? Think gov officials work for you? You didn't look close enough. One day, then go back to sleep occupied. Hashtag open air prisoner, open air prisoner. Who's the human, uh, the, the, gov- the biggest human trafficker are, are these governments. And they're doing it through at least one aspect. I get quicker for the broadcast purpose is the FRN. And I don't know that anybody, you want to end the Fed, it won't end that servitude. So then I tweeted out another thing to expand on the point. Regarding this human trafficking awareness day, I was trying to bring awareness to the human trafficking that everybody is the subject of. And I question whether or not how the FRN is not this thing that causes trafficking, a human trafficking by the government. And I ask not the FRN note, the FR note as a question. And then I put a definition. Debt bondage is a form of labor trafficking and is the most widely used method of enslaving people. And another quote, sometimes the arrangement is structured as debt bondage with the victim not being permitted to be or able to pay off the debt. Hashtag human trafficking awareness day. In the United States, are you able to pay off the debt that is evidenced by the Federal Reserve evidence of debt? 
it should tell you that the United States government is the is a human trafficker. I was going to say biggest, but I don't know about China. China's probably just it's got so many more people. But for for those of us that seem to live in the land of the free, you've been duped. The fact that you use the evidence of debt to try and think you're paying for things is your is the transparent slavery, the shackle around your neck, the millstone around your neck, the debt bondage, the human trafficking victim that I think everyone looks way beyond. And I got this basic information. You can look on for on and on. You can look on and on about this stuff. Is a uh, human trafficking. Uh, underneath even the Wikipedia has those two quotes, and I wanted to focus you on debt bondage, and people don't realize that the Federal Reserve note is a form of debt bondage. And we continue to use it. And that's what my problem was. They connected, they connect everything to this Federal Reserve note as if it's the origination of the work. Why the law of the land works so much more interesting, and why the minted money can't be used as an FRN Note, but it has to be on the ledger as an asset. So is your actual work in production an asset. And it's not a debt bondage. And so I want to make that distinction that why, another reason why they go after producers is to enslave them. The obvious one is to enslave them. They're political prisoners. But if you can't work, see, Mother Nature provides, and you then develop what Mother Nature provides. You are not beholden to anybody for that, and the grants to do that has stopped the government from claiming so, is what I've been telling you on and on. So I found this human, uh, my contribution to the Human Trafficking Awareness Day was that you're all being trafficked as uh, animals, and one of the tools is, that they're using to do that is the Federal Reserve Ed of Evidence of Debt, the FRN, note, note, evidence of debt. Debt or not a master B and a debt uh, servitude is created, a debt bondage, the bond, the bondage, the millstone around your neck, the, sh- the, the, the chain around your ankle is where identified when a victim is not per- not being permitted or able to pay off the debt. And then what debt? And so let's just start and leave it there. Uh, my contribution to your your you're being humanly trafficked, and the government is out there to tell you that. And we're going to go one day, wake up, and we'll just go to sleep because none of us pay attention to all these things. And so go ahead and get on the cryptocurrency where they can re- just regulate yourself right into absolute control. And as we saw in California, uh, where we heard, as I said it, in California, they already have the uh, tap to your bank accounts through all that ledger. As I told you, they had. I told you this as well. It was why they, they created the blockchain technology. And it may not even be Bitcoin or Ethereum. It's going to be private to the things you need that government can attach or deny completely. And that may still happen in South Korea. I don't know. But right now, they're going to, they're, one of the major markets in the world is uh, being shut down, at least, uh, you know, for the legality of it. You can still do it. Like we can still do grow dope when it was illegal. You just had to pay pay the consequences if you get caught. I uh, reported also on these uh, a problem we had gotten a little story about. Well, they're calling it espionage in this uh, report. Uh, that we got report again in this in- internet connection and the cryptocurrency and the iPhones and all your connection through these digital devices. One of the devices, the weapons of quiet, uh, silent weapons of quiet wars. Uh, and your integration with the new, uh, the w- brave new future here, whatever the wild world, whatever the hell they want to call it. Uh, I told you that the cameras, we got a report that there's cameras being sold from Japan, uh, excuse me, from China, uh, and they were uh, everywhere. And I said, well, wasn't that, you know, again, with the 1985 military man from China saying they were at some point going to stretch their leg out so they, because they got too many people. And they're willing to throw 700 million, a million of those people at any, any, any landmass to take it over. Wouldn't it be just just nifty if they had a bunch of surveillance going on and there's these cameras that uh, they were were finding out are being bought from China and the Internet of Things and the hackability and all that. I brought all that up. Well, today here's an interesting story that came back. Maybe they listened behind the woodshed and they got a little bit spooked or or they needed to quell something. Espionage fears spur U.S. Army base to replace Chinese security cameras. A U.S. Army base in Misery 
has removed all of its Chinese-made cameras follow, following concerns that the devices were being used by China to conduct surveillance uh, at a U.S. military base. Well, they go through and they deny it, but they make an interesting little uh, st- a little statement about they didn't think they really had a risk. They were looking at, at stopping a perception. Instead, he says, instead the Army replaced the uh, heck vision cameras to remove any negative perception about the presence of the cameras after reports surface about their use. And then he says, at no time did any of these cameras cover a high security or high security critical asset. Well, if they really weren't worried about it, why didn't they not put them there? Or why did he even make that statement? And, and so here, the point I want to get at is that the Internet of Things is, is, the, is the silent weapons that's going to be used against all peoples. However, one people's against another, the, again, people's against themselves, the caucusocracy, any caucusocracy against the people is all the weapons of the war against us. And you, you just can't uh, belittle that, that condition. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand how we really could. Uh, New York State Appellate Court says cell site location records have no expectation of privacy. Another weapon, another utility, another inroad by the military into your life through the device you accept, your consent, you're governed by this. The Supreme Court will deliver its ruling on an issue of cell site location info later this year, possibly changing the contours of the third party doctrine for the first time since its erection out of thin air more than four decades ago. Until uh, then, a patchwork of decisions have been laid, uh, handed down by uh, state courts. Uh, some finding state law provides more protection for cell phone users than the United States Constitution. Uh, and at the federal level, however, re- years of precedent have resulted in most unified front f- by appellate, appellate courts. The point is, this third-party doctrine is what we're being killed by. That's the private entities. Uh, there's, they're making the inroad into that, and you can continue to hook onto it uh, you can continue to be part of that Internet of Things, the radio, uh, the radio technology that's going on. There's nothing that they're not going to be able to get at. Uh, if you think you're going to be able to hide, uh, your, well, you think you get a hide, that may that'd be a surprise for you. I'm asking you to reconsider all this stuff. Keep looking forward. The news is coming from other people that what I've been saying is, is, is correct. It's rolling out pretty much like I was explaining uh, as we could see that the uh, as, that the exceptions are allowed to the government to do, and we just not have haven't formulated the proper response. And I've been here for now nine years, attempting to give you that idea that there is something to do. There is a more proper response, and but we're to the point where it's going to take a lot more of us being able to do that and doing it, not just being able, but to do those things. It's not a not something that's a question anymore. Uh, and I was I didn't have time to get to the Bundy thing, but the problem with the Bundy thing, he steps out. He says uh, he's not mad at the – I did touch it. I want to reiterate it. He thinks that the federal government wasn't his problem. He has to go after that trespasser. He doesn't even have to go into the court of law to do it. He just got to show that they trespassed. And he's got – he doesn't have to have the culpability angle. He just has to show they did it, and he's going to have a, a way to go. Uh, that they were tossed out, mistrial, long time coming. That was just the the, the, the judge in that case is – a. Doing the, I told you this, but it's the cat box cover up, folks. That's all that she's doing. She's mitigating a real harm that, uh, that they haven't, not a lot of people have caught on to, if anybody, uh, about what's going on with the, with that trial and that court and that system. Everything I've told you, it's all being hidden. The people that are coming out of it and everyone rallying around how cool that was are missing the whole entire point. I think the war starts now. Uh, they, now they have the evidence and they need to go on. They have many different avenues to cause remedy here. I hope they go down the right ones. They haven't till done till now, but but I hope I keep hoping <laughs> beyond hope maybe. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope something as I said is a bit of inspiration to get you started on the thing you find that you need to make right. Grimner, thank you very much for uh, what you do at reallibertymedia.com dot uh, com and the broadcaster and the archives and all that stuff and uh, Jules over at ucy dot tv and all your cast castings about this uh, broadcast again pre pod post whatever you want to call it. Uh, and uh, over at Freedoms Network Social Network Uh, remember I'm at Minds.com I'm over at BitChute uh, and uh, where uh, Vince has been putting us up uh, on uh, YouTube though that I think he's being adjusted uh, that might be being adjusted so again I'll be here next week Tech Diffs and, and Nature Willing Well that's another lesson I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. 
from behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast. This is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. A can of whoop ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.